What's up YouTube? Welcome to another series here. I've got the London system for you guys. This is an opening that's special to me. I think it's a big reason why I became a grandmaster. Uh, I think I'm very good at the opening and I've got some tips and tricks that I'm hoping to teach you guys along the way here as we start at 800 ELO and work our way up. I will only be able to include the games with the white pieces, of course, but I decided to run this uh, series idea anyway, so if you see some jumps in rating, that's probably why. Enjoy the series. All right, we got the challenge in. Okay, it's a five minute game. Good luck, dude. Okay, we have, first of all, we're playing a Norwegian. That should already be like just an indication that the guy's not going to be uh, playing super weird stuff in the opening. So D4, uh, D5 we got. E6, we're going to go E3. C5. Okay, now C5 is almost always going to beckon the move C3 in response. Remember what I said about those queenside pieces? So here I'm going to play knight d2, as opposed to, for example, starting with these moves. Um, these ones are probably going to be next. Bishop d3. Now, a6 is maybe not the best move. Certainly not a mistake or anything, but I think it's unnecessary. It's not like uh, bishop b5 was a threat. Um, and again, here... I'm just going to leave that there. So I'm going to let bishop takes f4 happen if my opponent wants. c4, bishop c2. You could even play bishop takes uh, d6, but yeah, I think bishop c2 is simple. The thing is, if this gets taken, then I have that open e-file. If not, then I might consider taking and playing e4. But either way, I want to get developed and... Uh, I think my position is looking up here. Takes on d6, followed by e4. Looks very tempting. I think I'm probably going to go with that. The other way to play is take, take, knight e5, followed by f4. You know, castle, etc., all that. So I have an option to put my knight in, play f4, treat it more like a stone wall, or to take and play e4, which opens things up. And I kind of like takes and playing e4 a bit more, uh, but I think I need to do something right now. If I castle, bishop e7, um, black starts to control the e4 square, so I'm going to take this moment to go like this and play e4. Starting e5, by the way, so I think it needs to be dealt with. Um, like you can't, don't have time for this move, for example. Yeah, bishop e2 after c4 it wouldn't have been a mistake, but certainly bishop c2 is better. There's no debate about that. Um, it's, a, it's a much better diagonal to be on. Okay, so knight here. Getting out of the way. If I take now, the queen cannot capture back. So it actually has to be pawn takes. And then, for example, if I give a check, you know, like, it kind of have to block with the queen. So... My opponent's kind of being pushed around a little bit here, although it's not really, it's not resulting in like any forced wins that I can see. So let's take stock of the position as they say. take stock here takes takes queen e2 uh, no doubt is an advantage but after queen e7 you know takes takes castles I'm way ahead but black I feel like can uh, squirm a little bit So I think we'll probably just keep it simple here. 
And a castle. Um, if castles, maybe uh, maybe rook here makes some sense. Like rook e1 is a normal move for me no matter what. So we're probably going to start with it. e5 and knight f1 g3 is going to be how I intend to launch this attack. Knight f8 looks... Has that feeling that it's wrong. <laughs> That's my first thought. So let's start by taking. I want to open things up. Now that I see my opponent's not castling in either direction for at least two moves, I certainly want to open things. Bishop takes. I'm looking at knight e4 first. Let's just uh, throw that guy up. Probably knight e5 next. Something like that. Five certainly looks uh, like a move. Queen H5 here. Takes and queen takes. Yeah, I definitely like I like that. Just a threat. Takes, queen takes, and there start to be some pretty, pretty nasty kind of tactics happening. Um, yeah, hitting the pawn on g7 is the, the worst of it. Because taking that pawn almost wins material immediately. And g6 always looks like a tough move to play. Those dark squares start screaming after that. And also like anytime you take here, this bishop is a really important anchor in the position I think for black. If you give it up, you know, not only does bishop takes gain some time, but in general, I think it'll always favor white. Hmm. This move is definitely tempting because that has to happen. But apart from that, it's not really, not really anything happening there. Um, I think we'll keep it like kind of simple. Take and just put the knight on a good square and go from there. We'll give a check. <clears throat> um, probably the king keeps running in this direction. In which case, I think it's probably time to open things up, or at least try to. So knight f4 looks dangerous, but after queen g5, I'm the one that's actually invading. So knight f4, I think, gets into some, some kind of trouble. This feels wrong, definitely. Um, I don't see exact an exact move there. Um, let's start by taking, take this guy and just put that queen over here. Queen e7 is an idea, also queen g3, and certainly the, the move is pawn takes. Check maybe, I don't know, we'll go here. Whoa. Don't understand that move. Um, that is a, that is an aggressive one. GG, MBL. Looked like he, uh, I don't know. It seemed like maybe that was a move uh, because of the, the clock or something. It was so unnecessary though. Just had to save that a little more. I like to say that uh, I used this reference before. I think it's a good one. 
You ever seen Fast and the Furious, right? They have the race, and then near the uh, near the end, of course, near the finish line, near the finish line, all of a sudden, you know, the the rookie puts on the nitrous, right? Boom, shoots ahead. The more experienced player sits back, you know, he lets him take the lead. And then when he's just a little bit closer to the finish line, he turns on the nitrous at the appropriate time and takes the win. I think Rook takes H2 is just flipping on the nitrous a little early. A little too early. Save these kind of moves for when I'm much lower on time, like less than five seconds, less than two seconds, stuff like that. Um, this queen check is just my kind of nice fancy way of playing, but uh, I don't think this queen check matters. For example, king takes h2, I just, I, there's nothing going on here, <laughs> as far as I can see for, um, for black, like check, just king somewhere. Also, I realized, like, I, I was in time pressure as well, so I also played uh, queen takes queen a little bit too hastily, but queen takes um, f7 maybe was a good move too, but for me, trading everything was nice and simple. Kept it clean. But yeah, rook takes h2 I don't think was working. Black's a little bit worse here, but not nothing serious. Um, the opening definitely didn't go fantastic. A little bit too many... To be knight moves. One, two, three, four. But um, definitely made it work in, in a decent way here. I think there was a little bit better than what I went for. Still looked pretty good, but I think I may have missed better because MBL definitely definitely made it work. Wasn't totally convincing, but uh, there was no decisive wins for white that I could see. GG MBL. That was a nice game. Like I said, uh, your opening was a bit suspicious. Too many night moves, it looked like, especially this guy. But uh, I think you were very resilient and no big mistakes, except the very end when it looked like you were playing for the clock or just going for a tactic that looks speculative. But it's a good game, solid. Oh, we get another game with the white pieces. Good vibes. Okay, I haven't seen B5 yet. So <laughs> nice first time for me. Got to be careful not to take that, even if he left it hanging because of bishop takes g2. Yeah, six, let's get that helpful h3 move in. I never really like playing c4. Like, I like playing c4 maybe when there's a pawn there, but Trading my C-pawn for the B-pawn doesn't feel great, so I'm going to stick with this setup. This bishop can always tuck back into h2. Bishop d3. Castles, queen e2, etc, etc. Let's put that bishop back. Again, doing this... A little bit preemptively, and I would say that this move is probably a bit fast. But there's some logic behind it. Let's start with rookie one. A4, also extremely tempting when the pawn's just sitting out there on B5. Let's do that. You can't play this right now, and pawn takes here will take. This move just hangs this pawn every which way. <laughs> so that is definitely not a good move. Question is, which way do we take it? This is the most natural in the sense that it keeps my pawn chain intact, but pawn here hits the knight. Knight here loses more material by the looks of it. I'm liking pawn here. Ooh, that knight is going to be trapped as well. I'm going to start by taking this, maybe get rid of these rooks, but g4 in general is going to trap this knight.
Do we throw this one in? Certainly looks like it. G4. Yeah, you never one it's actually a very common thing in the London that players go here and you move your bishop back and then if for some reason they can't go back to where they came from g4 always traps the knight it's just a good thing to know surprisingly it happens a lot one way you could imagine it happening that people like don't really pay attention to is let's say black doesn't even blunder that pawn pawns on e6 let's say white plays the move knight e5 knight takes pawn takes now i know here knight h5 can be taken but the concept is the same that knight h5 g4 would trap that knight so there are a lot of times in London where you play knight e5, and if you ever take back with the pawn, it's just good to know that knight going to h5, often g4 just wins it. It's good to keep in mind. d4 doesn't really bother me because uh, I've got this knight supported at the moment. Uh, f6 is not a bad try. I like it. Takes, takes, takes looks fine for me, though. Probably take with the bishop there. Knight is actually fully attacked, so no time for any fancy moves. Bishop here, we can even go bishop d4. Queen g4 is what I want to do. That's a, a fun looking move. Yeah, here we can play knight f3, which just, I think that deals with the problem nicely. Bishop's got to move. Takes, I mean, well, I'm definitely going to take pretty much regardless, but takes um d4 so let's calculate what he's calculating i think we can go for some pretty fun checkmate ideas here but they need to be prepared correctly just trying to play h6 that's my first thought i think i might play h6 does that do anything or no takes d4 h6 unfortunately Bishop takes f3, looks strong. Yeah, stronger than rook takes f3, at which point I would sack and maybe have a playable position. Uh, uh. I don't think we can do anything that fun, unfortunately. This looks like I need to give this knight back. Yeah, well... You know we gotta take. After d4, I think we just need to play this position. Sadly. Queen d2. Rook takes. King here. I guess the uh, technically the safest is probably to play here. I think I'm gonna put some respect on uh, on his move and go for it and take this pawn after. So rook takes, bishop takes, and we still have two pieces for the rook. We got one pawn. Like this. Oh, 
probably something like queen d3 if he takes, which I can only assume he will. Oh, that is a strong looking move. Let's go here. The thing is, I want to go here and take this rook, right? With knight g5. But I need to be able to make that happen first. Because my knight is currently pinned. So I'd actually like to play king g3. Then I will be threatening this. That's a, you know, it's a KO, as they say. So may as well just do it once. Just to, you know, just to see. Still threatening uh, the move in general, but. Okay, so here. And if queen f7, I think I'll take it. Here, I was going to try this. And we're in one of these weird positions where. Oh, okay, I thought he was going to check me on a different square. We're in one of these weird positions where my, I'm threatening to take on f7, so it's objectively maybe draw. We gotta go up the board here. Queen g7, I expect. And let's do this. No, I didn't predict right. Damn, he was ticking down. Props to this guy. Holy smokes. What a move. Let's check it out. That was sick. Especially because he hung a piece and it's so rare to hang a piece so obviously and then come up with such a uh, tactic right after. Like, knight f3 looks good, but... Um, duh, 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 duh. Buh, buh, buh. Why not just bishop e2? Eh, to be honest, Joe, I didn't see it. Bishop e2 is definitely the best move here, but even still, like, I, I was going to play queen here and king g1, and, like, you know, this stuff is still okay. But I respected l right. I really did. Like, I didn't not play bishop e2 because I didn't want to. I just didn't really consider it. I was only thinking, okay, you know, if it should be four, we can bail out here, and it's not great, but it's not bad. But I don't really sugarcoat my losses. I mean, this this should be two move didn't really occur to me. A lot of moves. This one certainly not the best of them. And you know, White still maintains a nice advantage here, but not a nice advantage like you're gonna win advantage. A nice advantage like you still probably need a mistake. And I was close to getting it with like a queen b3 trick. But I needed, I needed one more, I needed my king out of this pin. So, hmm, didn't really get it. Um, I'm wondering, not much happened in this game other than blunders and blunders. And I mean from both sides because bishop b4 was just not, not really good. Yeah, to be honest, I didn't even see bishop b2. Didn't really consider it. I saw Bishop F2 and I was like, yeah, that works. Well, <laughs> that is a nice looking move. I really wanted to try some of this stuff, but um, Bishop takes F3 I thought was so annoying. Like still playable, but I wanted to sack my queen and go for something here. Didn't look good enough. And in the end, the time got so low. He hung his queen, but um, I was really expecting this move. So this was a particular mistake. Funny enough, I think if you pre-move this, it's still, still possible to draw. <laughs> Can't take anything away from L right though. To be down a piece and at least find something resourceful. Maybe most people here would play bishop b2. Just didn't occur to me, honestly. But I think you don't need bishop b2 for you to be able to get out of this. Like, 
King G1. No, Bishop takes. You're going here. If Rook takes, okay. You can play almost any move. Takes here. Queen here. But, um, no, I definitely, definitely respect Bishop F2. Well, moving on. Um, we might need to just simul MBL, MBL uh, 10, 20 games to get to 1300. Might find ourselves hard stuck here. Let's throw in a KO for him. We got the white pieces. Okay, E5. I've told you guys how we're playing against E5, right? You guys remember? E5. Okay, so first of all, I see a move like this. I mean, I'm basically going Knight C3 or E4. Let's go Knight C3. Let's see where he goes. Again, if he goes here, probably consider a move like E4. Bishop C5 is already a little bit sus. I can tell that he want, he's thirsting for the Queen H4. Queen H4, how are we gonna deal with Queen takes F2? I mean, G3 looks simple enough. I mean, this just stops it. No Queen F6, there's no nothing. The guy's really on the run here. What can I say? Queen to B4. I don't like him playing this move and maybe trading queens with me because I, I have to win quickly. So we're going to go knight f3. I'm trying to think though, what does he want? He wants queen here, right? We have to understand. What does the thirsty guy want? He wants to play queen here. So let's let's prepare something for that a thirsty guy wouldn't expect. He wants to play queen b6. Mm-hmm. Queen B six. Must be. Don't tell me you're gonna get all Okay, let's go here. Don't tell me you're gonna turn into a pro now. Once we get castled, I find my opponent's position a little bit dubious. Also, queen b6 doesn't really do much because I can probably kick that queen away. Ooh. Now I think he might be tre trending, uh, trending in trouble, let's put it that way. Let's castle. Knight here is a huge threat. No longer pinned, my buddy guy. This looks like pure pain. You can see queen b5 salty. That's a good call, actually. That is a good call. Queen c4, we can also probably force him to go to b5 or a6 as well. So I can see queen c4 and then walk it into it, you know? From here, this is also likely going to walk into it. Oof, maybe he's going to put the piece there. I mean, it doesn't matter if he does, but I think that might be the case. Gonna need these moves from you there, D, D Costopolis. I think we might have to take this.
What is the most reliable victory here? We're on move 11. We need to win in under 28 and a half moves. So we do have a lot of options here. We're not uh, desperate for moves just yet. And HE5 is tempting, but Bishop H3 looks successful. Most importantly, he can't go here to like do any weird queen trade stuff. And Bishop here, Knight takes, Bishop takes also gets this. So I'm, I'm a fan of this and, and certainly this is the most likely. Made in three. But I think he'll he'll probably go here. Could also see him like going here and just hanging his queen. I don't know why. Just seems like a blind spot. Very difficult um, what to do. Yeah, so he goes here. Not completely convincing. Still looks like we're on the right track though. The issue I have with queen there is queen c5, like before taking. Now queen here, of course, looks very nice. Should take still that. Um, now if queen here, um, I'll give queen c7 and queen d8. Rook d1, knight g5 are all uh, moves that come to mind. Interesting move. He's covering things in a weird way. After queen b8, there is knight c8. So he's, he's surviving. Oddly enough, with my knight covering this square, um, I'm taking, I'm playing e6, and then I'm playing knight e5, and the guy doesn't really have a way to defend this uh, this square. King e8 looks like maybe one of the only moves. Like, he can go here, to be honest, and go to, to b8. Looks a little weird, but maybe that's, that's the, the way to go for him. Drops both of these pieces, but maybe he picks this one up in the corner. We're at move 17, by the way. Ooh, move 18. Move 18, Dr. Lord Mayonnaise. Uh, maybe that was an acid trip after all, uh, but <laughs> I mean, we really smashed the under here. 18 moves. Poof. No, 18 moves is crazy. <laughs> Dr. Lord Mayonnaise is not getting good intel from his dreams. We are smashing that under. All right, there's no active bets with Dr. Lord, right? I need to establish these. This might affect my gameplay, but I don't think so. Oh, we've been getting this a lot. And I think active bet says Dr. Lord. Okay, it's the same opening. <laughs> Dr. Lord says active bet, active bet. Guys, I told you how we play against this last time, right? Knight c3, don't worry about the pawn. Play e4, f4, knight f3. That's what we're going for. Right? Don't bother going into any of those England lines. Like, 
Those lines are winning by force for black. We already know that. I have, you know, there's documentation out there. Okay, F4 is what I'm saying. People don't know how to get developed in this opening. All they know is how to sack their queen. Easy to play against these players. Do we hit him with this? Let's hit him with queen e2 for now. Bishop e2 is also fine, but we're gonna go with the queen. So knight d4, my guy, queen d3. I think he's walking himself into trouble, but we'll, we'll wait and see how this pans out. Knight d4, I definitely think is shaky. Surely he's playing queen h4. I, mean, I don't really know what's going on. That's a piece for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now, because knight d5 is going to hurt as well. And knight d5 looks like pure pain. Bishop e2. Looks like a nice move to pin the knight as well. Because yeah, he's got he's got to play this move. C6, we can maybe go knight e3. D6. So h3 is available. It's not actually threatening to do anything. I'm going to start with this move. Knight g5 looks interesting. Knight takes e5 if he takes also. But I really just want to like get castled. Um, once my rooks show up to the middle of the board, it should be pretty nasty here. Okay, so he's really going, <laughs> he's really going for it here. Um, queen here, there might be a bishop f5 move he wants to play. But I also don't really want to play queen d1 because, like I said, I'm trying to get ca castled here. I'm going to try to play queen a5 check. It's almost the same as queen h5 check with a knight on e5 over here. You know what I mean? Like, you've probably seen this, this before. <laughs> Now his king's on d8. Well, the same tactic works. <laughs> it's just on the other side of the board. We're on move 16, by the way. So we're not necessarily on the way to an easy uh, victory in less than 28 or less than 28.5 moves. That's not very clear. We want to get our pieces involved here. That's my one thing is I, I don't have a lot of pieces involved. Let's check. Bishop a6. Yeah, it just doesn't threaten anything. Here we go. This is what I want. The king coming up the board. 
That's what we need. <laughs> this is yeah, exactly right, buddy. Exactly right. So. C4 is an interesting move. My idea is knight d4 and bishop f3, leading to a mate. There's knight d4 immediately, but it looks much less good. So I kind of like c4. Also, of course, looking at a4, which is just a standard good move. It doesn't look like it leads to completely force mate but it just looks generally very good. I think a4 is a bit safer than, um, yeah, I think a4 is a bit safer than c4. c4, he could do something like this, whereas a4, something like this gets mated, so. I think a4 is the correct safe choice. Give this check. And king here, I'm going to go queen b7 check, not just try to take this. Unless there's a force mate here. c4, here's mate. Here, there's queen b7. King d3. I mean, you, sh you feel like this should be mate, although it kind of isn't. <laughs> Uh, king d3, there's queen d5. Okay. And if king here, there's knight h4, which also leads to a force mate. So I think I think this move might be mate. The other thing is this move is there's only this. It's all mate, isn't it? It's all mate. It's all mate. Bishop b7 here, and then bishop somewhere leads to me. I think it all leads to me. Check. We'll go with this one. So definitely when he goes here, we have a mate lined up. Oh uh, yeah, this was the easier mate, I think. Just to go here and then just. There's no squares for the king to go to up the board. We're on move 23, so. we go. Uh, that's 27 moves. Oh, it's under 28.5. Damn, 27 move win. Very close, Dr. Lerman. Oof. It was almost not quite the under. Almost didn't get it there. Jeez, real close. Skin of my teeth. Step. Yeah, a little bit of trolling. I'm not gonna lie, a little bit of trolling. But 27 moves, nice, uh, nice finish there. Well, King Crucify, if I ever play Queen A8, my opponent should go backwards. That's the thing. Like, they're never gonna walk up the board, or I can't assume they will. We got the white pieces. I think you might have misheard the dream. We've been seeing a lot of c5 and e5, so hopefully you guys are at least getting a workout on how to play not the London. Because <laughs> people are going to play sidelines. I don't have a lot of respect for the Benoni, so I always uh, <laughs> I always try to play 
into it. You might have got the dates wrong, uh, Dr. Lord. That's possible, eh? I think you might have got the dates wrong, my dude. It's really not looking like, uh, like, like you called it correctly. You might have to uh, lick your wounds there, Dr. Lord Mayonnaise. Uh, so far, I think every game that you've been here for has been under 28 and a half moves with white. Literally, maybe every game. Let's go here. Yeah, this is gonna require more. I mean, you're gonna see D4, C5 a lot less. So you need to focus on it, you know, much less than other things in the London. But when I see it, I always just, you know, just take as much space as possible. You always uh, are rewarded in chess for taking space. Welcome back, Dark Lord. Oh, okay. That's for me. That's for me. That's a very free pawn, the way I see it. B3, Knight C3. Yeah, we're up a full pawn here. Got the Bishop pair as well. C4, we'll probably play B4. Two connected pass pawns, bishop pair, bishop going to C6, and then honestly, I think it's the one two punch all the way home. This could get pretty nasty. This could get pretty nasty. I don't have a care in the world, my guy. Probably gonna bring the rook over before I push because uh, if I go straight away, then um, it can be sacrificed for, which I don't want to allow. B6, let's get the queen in there. Check. Here we got b6, rook b8, he's all tied up. <laughs> the knight on a8 is not, not too pretty with that one. No, we're only letting him out because we can just keep pushing all the way. These pawns are gonna win the damn thing. None of these pieces are really doing much. That could be taken. And then, uh, well, I don't, I got three potential queens here, plus one on the board. <laughs> Looks hopeless. GG. Looks like one more for 1250 is needed. You see, Dr. Lord, you should have bet on this game. That was 32 moves. You sure you don't want to get in, get in on the next one, Dr. Lord? I mean, this was 32 moves. I mean, oh, just, there's tons of hope for you. Okay, we've done it. Here it is. Okay, we got a regular London here. Let's see what he does. C5? No, okay, we'll stick with E3. Stick to our guns here. G6. We'll hit him with a knight c3 and see how he reacts. The castles will definitely play h5. Knight h5 is a little bit weird. We'll go back. This is an idea to play g4 as well. It's 
start with the bishop. So after knight f6, we can just go h5. Very solid stuff from my opponent so far. My bishop on h2 is a bit odd. Such is life though, he played knight h5. I wonder what he's thinking. It definitely doesn't look so appetizing to play kingside castle here. So I get that. Something is... <laughs> something's being lost here. We're already at move 13. <laughs> Definitely uh, some sketchy stuff. Certainly these tactics shouldn't work out for my opponent. He's already down a piece, very likely gonna be down another one. So this wins another piece, but I'm not exactly sure that's the best for me here. Let me think. It's tough. I think we gotta do it. I can't see anything else that's much better. This looks like a very tough game to produce a win from. We're up some good material, so that's not the issue. While e5 is tempting, I'm not sure about closing the position. Not sure about closing things. Hmm. Okay, let's go here. Against my better judgment. Queen e6, bishop g4, f5 takes, queen takes, knight f3. It's so many moves, that's the issue, but I'm going to harbor some hope there. Thanks, B-Ren, for the prime sub. Okay, this...
this one. Very difficult to create a mate threat. How do we do it? H6 forces bishop f8, but <laughs> I'm not sure how impressive that is. this and mate. I have to go for tricks. It also looks like I'm up to something over here. So let's just pre-move this so it looks like crazy. Okay, evidently it didn't look that crazy. <laughs> I thought that move was wild. I'm getting no, no credit for this. Yes. 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 We had to we had to buckle down and come up with a trap for my guy here. A conniving idea. Yes. Cheeky, cheeky. <laughs> Dr. Lord Mayonnaise, the move count was 20, my dude. <laughs> it's not even close. It's not even close. You're down so bad to this guy. J.R. Malkovich. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is just a brutal L for Doc. Like that's... That's when you're ahead and the river card is the is the one out, you know? That's Texas Hold'em with one out and you just got river carded. Was that okay for you, Eddie? I love it. We're on the same page. Eddie, the endgame magician. I love it. Yep, that looked like a good one. Nasty KO there. And we get the white pieces. And you see Bishop F5, immediate C4. No time for E3. Get that knight out. I think even here I'd be uh, maybe keen on that, but let's take it a little slow with e3. c6, queen b3, c5. That looks a little suspicious. Let's go here. I'm curious how this gets handled. Okay, queen out. Queen out. Okay, I'll take here. Queen trade will take back. Knight takes d5, knight takes, queen takes, queen takes b2 looks like probably too much, honestly. A little bit too much. Knight b5 is available. And yeah, knight b5 is kind of tricky. Let's put that knight there. Check we have this. That's. That's the intention. It's not like uh, forced anything, but it still looks good. Yeah, it's it's tough to know how to deal with this kind of tension when everybody just has their pawns sitting there like that. Good move. Good move. We want to go here. Not really.
take. Check, and then we'll bring the knight back. It's done its bit out there. Yeah, c4 is pretty annoying, so that's kind of why I took. Also, queen a4 would have been a very strong move if not for bishop to d7, I think. That's what I think. Check. Should be four can be played. But the, the important thing for me is that um, at the end of all these lines, I get bishop b5 and castle. Like I get to do it in one move. So um, here, bishop d7. It's only okay. So let's just save this guy. Rook c2, bishop d3. And then if rook takes, we have bishop takes e4. And of course, he's got to be pretty careful where he puts things. I had knight d4 there, but rook takes f2 looked very strong. And here he drops, drops a full thing. Takes, then we grab that bishop. I think we want to take back. There were some other tempting moves there for a sec, but e4 for sure. I, I almost want to play b4 here. a helpful move because now I win the bishop if he castles or something. And I stop knight d3. Knight a6, b5. I'm looking to play b5, sack a pawn, and keep the initiative. Like, I don't really want him to get castled. I think if I can prevent the castling, I'm on... The road to success. Let's do it. Even bishop a4, I just go rook d2. Like I feel like as long as he can't do that, I'm in good shape. think there <clears throat> he's gonna have to do something like this to get his um, pieces out which is more than okay from what I can see and I think we still have some work to do unfortunately which I hate A4, A5, if he takes, then we get to grab this pawn. Check. And maybe check again, and check again. There's some bad things can happen here. Probably a good move, objectively, but let's see. 
here threatens two things. Okay. Just threatens this. Get F3, or sorry, F4. Whoa. Okay, we'll take the plus nine. 1300 with the white pieces with the London. Let's go. All right, knight c3, right? e4, we've got f4 coming. f4 is in the hole. Okay, so this move, I'm gonna say, look, dude, I don't care, I'm playing f4 anyway. What do you got for me? Let's see. That's no London? What are you talking about? This is, this is the London. It's normal. We all know that, good old move. Good old E5. It's my own move, so I'm showing you guys how to beat it right now. Queen E7. There's Bishop here. Where's this knight going? Got some decent squares myself. So the question is here, or here. Knight D5 gains uh, some nice time on the queen. I think it's objectively better. Knight e4 hits the bishop, but there's some tricky pawn, pawn moves to deal with there. So let's go here. Bishop f2, side step. Spawn is also hit. h3 next. Yes, the quick finish McGee. Knight h6, bishop d3, I think. If knight takes e5, trying to be fancy, the bishop is still defending the g5 knight. Knight h2, moves like that, we definitely don't care about. g6 should get, you know, dismantled on the dark squares. Move. Not that obvious. Hello, Chaco. Not that obvious. Gotta feel like this can't be a bad start, but at the same time, I don't really see. <laughs> I don't really see what happens next. I was hoping he really wouldn't play this, but here it is, smack in my face. This is the should be destruction variation, but actually very confusing, not maybe not actually winning variation.
Okay, we will entertain. Jack. Jack. Rookie 8 loosens up this pawn. He's got ideas, but I've got ideas. <laughs> Wouldn't that be sweet, Joe? Not sure he's going to be so kind. <laughs> it would be appreciated, though, honestly. Unless he makes a fairly decisive kind of threat, like, not sure, doesn't have too many moves. Knight takes f7, knight takes, rook takes, this kind of thing. Um, hmm. I think there is a potential that he plays this strange looking move, which I have to say I wouldn't be happy to see. So I'm going to go with this. And if king takes, I will take this. Here, I will take. I take this over winning the queen? Do we think that gets us a win? Okay. Yes. And I think this is going to be our win con here for the eggs. Now, operation, get this guy. Let's go here. Put this bishop here. Good things should happen. Annoying move. <laughs> That's annoying. That's annoying right there, Steve. Exactly have a mate here. That would be friendly for sure. Friendly is nice. I don't think both can be stopped. Jack. Oof, check and Shavan8050 has eventually gone down. We've hit 1300. Yay. Yay. Okay. Oh. Yay. Hello to Lethbridge Chess. Thank you for making it to the end of today's episode of the London System series. If you enjoyed it, leave a comment below and like the video. And don't forget to subscribe right there and turn post notifications on so you never miss the next video. Speaking of next video, if you want more of the London System series, click right there.